Revelation chapter 11 verses 3 and 4. And I will grant authority to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for twelve hundred and sixty days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. This is the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's an honor to be here again, and I'm very touched by Silas Choir. I was here last year. I see some faces are new and some are gone. But if we keep praying for our sisters and brothers and families and friends, may God have mercy on them and someday we can be once more together and serve God in this sanctuary. Amen. Amen. So uh, today's sermon is the mission and work of John the Baptist. And today's scripture is Revelation chapter 11, verse 3 to 4. And it says about the two witnesses, the two lampstands and the two olive trees. This is asking us whether Jesus is returning or not. From here, we must run. We have two responsibilities to carry. So let us ask ourselves, why did John the Baptist fall? We need to run so we don't repeat the mistakes he made. Many people ask when did he fall. Even pastors and theologians ask if he is the greatest, then why or how did he fail? This is why we must read the Bible carefully. When you read about John in the Bible, you know that he definitely witness Jesus Christ well. John chapter 1, verse 29, he says, Be heard, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is what he said when Jesus was coming toward John the Baptist. He just came to carry the burden of our sins. So, if we believe in Jesus Christ, do we still have sins? No. John witnessed Jesus so well in this aspect. John even sent two of his own disciples to be followers of Jesus Christ. The two disciples told John, The Messiah has come, so we will follow him and leave you. And John wholeheartedly sent them away. It shows his good heart. John chapter 3, verse 30, He must increase, but I must decrease. John said that Jesus must increase and he must decrease. He's saying that he must disappear and Jesus must increase and always be joyful. In the church, when everything is going well and everything is so fun, but when certain things affect us, then we start blaming the churches and God. This shows the true identity of human nature. In the beginning, the way John worked was great because he said that his decreasing or failing will make Jesus increase and be happy. So it is worthwhile. But later on, his position changed and he became suspicious toward Jesus Christ. Point one, John the Baptist in prison. We see Luke chapter 3, verse 15. John scored Herod about Herodias, his brother's wife, and then Herod locked John up in prison. King Herod had taken his brother's wife as his own wife, and he is very weak. John rebuked him, saying, How could you do such a thing? In a fleshly way, 
This is a really great of John. What would happen if a president divorced his wife and gets married to sister-in-law? In Korea, he would be kicked out right away. This was why King Herod was so angry with John and threw John in prison. Think properly, the position of man and God is different. In a worldly way, it looks right, but it was not right in God's eyes. John had the role from the beginning, the only witness, Jesus Christ. So, why did he get involved in worldly matters? Luke chapter 1, verse 75 to 76. In holiness and righteousness before him all our days, and your child will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go on before the Lord to prepare his ways. The Holy Spirit foretold John's life's purpose to testify about Jesus and prepare his way. But did John do that? Along the way, he was distracted. His thoughts were worldly. When Jesus heard that John went into prison, Jesus withdrew to Galilee. Literally speaking, let's say that Jesus came to Seoul to give the word, but instead he went to Jeju Island. So what would this mean? Inwardly, we must understand God's word. John had the role of being the bridge, but the bridge is not there. So how Jesus is going to cross over? There was no one to make that pass for Jesus. The reason why Jesus withdrew to Galilee is because there was no bridge. Matthew Chapter 4, verse 12. Now when he heard that John had been taken into custody, he withdrew into Galilee. God's work is set back. Then Jesus starts saying, Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. This is what exactly John said. Why did John speak these words? It is because Jesus Christ is the kingdom of himself. John preached in this manner, and so must we. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Jesus came to earth, but since John is in jail, and there is no one to witness him, so Jesus witnessed himself. That is why Jesus said, Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. Jesus should have said, Repent, I am your kingdom. Kingdom is here. But he could not say that. So he only told them that kingdom is near. So the kingdom had to probe the kingdom. God gave each of us a Lord to witness the kingdom. If we just close our mouths like the mute and all we do is eat honey, and do nothing, then we are lowering God's position to witnessing himself. We should be saying, God, please sit down on your throne, and I will witness for you. So let us witness the kingdom. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From the time Jesus began to preach and said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And also, chapter 12 said, He withdrew into Galilee. He just told people these words ever since John went to jail. From here, he see that John started out well, but he got sidetracked. Point two, John the Baptist is thoughtful about Jesus Christ. John recognized Jesus from his mother's womb, leaping for joy, when Mary visits Elizabeth, who was pregnant with him. This 
signifies John's only belief, even before birth. Luke chapter 1, verse 41. And it came about that when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. John had this great faith even from the womb. But did you know what he did while he was in jail? He sent two of his disciples to ask Jesus if he was the one or if there was another coming that they should wait for. He had declared Jesus as the Messiah, but in prison he struggled as Jesus never visited him. John was disappointed with Jesus. John was thinking, he is forgetting who I am and what I have done for him. Then he sent two disciples to ask Jesus that question. Jesus answered them, The blind sees, the lame works, and the poor receive the gospel. Why Jesus say this? Because this is written in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 35, verse 5 to 6. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened, and the ears of the deaf will be unstopped. Then the lame will leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb will shout for joy. When the blind opens their eyes, it means that they can recognize the Messiah. So why is it you can see and yet you doubt? Then after that Jesus said, Blessed are they who do not fall because of me. So does this mean John had failed? Then Jesus Christ said that John is the greatest out of all born from women. Why did Jesus say this? Because John had the opportunity to sit down, eat, drink, shake hands, and meet with Jesus. Other prophets witnessed without seeing Jesus. Then Jesus said that whoever is the least in the kingdom is still greater than John. Why? Because John had taught Jesus, if you want to be number one in the earth, then you must be number one in heaven. But he is the last. Truly, I say to you, among those born of Women, there has not arisen greater than John the Baptist. Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. So, let us not be like John the Baptist, who was at first number one. Then he became the least or the one at the end of the line. Our faith should not sway back and forth like John. Jesus clearly asked the people, what did you go out to the wilderness to see? A lead shaken by the wind? This means that John's face has shaken. Point three. Why did John the Baptist change? John did not change overnight, but there was a progress. What happened? There are a lot of reasons. Firstly, when John was in jail, Jesus did not even visit him one time. This itself could be the reason. Also, the things that he hears about Jesus with the way he behaves, that is so human. Like Jesus drinking wine, hanging out with the sinners, how he was such a glutton. John just could not understand this. John had started to doubt after hearing the reports made by his own disciples concerning Jesus. Why did John fall to this position? Because the Holy Spirit was not continuously in him. So we ask in more detail why the Holy Spirit was not in him all the time. It is because he went his own way. John was obliged to be with Jesus at all times. But he was not, and he did his own things, and 
this became a problem. Look at us now. Many people say that they have received the word of word, but they work their own ways and do their own things. We must not do this. Even until the end of the time, we must all stick together. If you separate yourself, then you know the result. Nowadays, we are all singing those results. First Corinthians, chapter fifteen, verse fifty-one to fifty-eight. Behold, I tell you a mystery: we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound. And the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. Like this word, we will be transformed when the last tr- trumpet is out. If you have received the Holy Spirit, then you must be with Jesus all the time. If not, then you will slowly lose the Holy Spirit. So let us imagine, if we were John the Baptist. After thirty years have passed by, then Jesus starts to appear, and starts to do the work of God. John said, "This is the Lamb of God, who will take our sins away." If we think of ourselves as John the Baptist, then it means that we have met Jesus Christ, who is the Messiah, and the one and only. Only then can you follow Jesus Christ. And get baptized, and make the passport Jesus, and witness that he is the Messiah. But John sent two of his disciples to ask Jesus if he was the one. Another two followed Jesus because John was previously teaching about Jesus coming. John did not follow Jesus. Where was John? He is supposed to help Jesus out. John should himself be a follower of Jesus. Why did he elsewhere and do something else? John, chapter one, verse thirty-five to thirty-seven. Again, the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked upon Jesus, and he worked, and said, "Behold, the Lamb of God." And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. And John, chapter three, verse twenty-two to twenty-three. After these things, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea, and there he was spending time with them and baptizing. And John also was baptizing in Anon near Salim, because there was much water there, and. They were coming and were being baptized. John was in Salim. Jesus Christ did not baptize himself, but he asked his disciples to do it. John chapter four, verse one to two. When therefore the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself was not baptizing, but he said. Disciples were. That is why, if we are John the Baptist, then until the end, we must remain with Jesus, whenever He may be. But why is many people receive the word and Christ, then they start to miss service, and all sort of excuses start to come out from them. They are slowly getting far away from the Holy Spirit. But they themselves do not know. So I pray for you that whatever you do, you must be close to Christ and be one with Christ. Our thoughts, our heart, and action must be same as Christ, or the way Christ wants it. If you become this type of person. Then you will be full of the Holy Spirit and be one with Jesus Christ. So shouldn't we be full of the Holy Spirit?
Point four. What must we do to receive the Holy Spirit continuously? Here are three points. Firstly, we must long for it. There are three types of ways to describe this. At first, I receive the Holy Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit is living in me, and last, I am full of the Holy Spirit. Now, we must know how to different these three concepts. Let's try which is the Holy Spirit living in me, and I am full of the Holy Spirit. Different is. So, have you received the Holy Spirit? Yes. Can you confirm it? Even if you have not received the Holy Spirit, you can still work hard. But fortunately, we have received the Holy Spirit already. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God said, Jesus is accursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Those who admit that Jesus is their Christ are people who have received the Holy Spirit. Those who have not received the Holy Spirit cannot confess their Christ. When you are confessing it, it is not you, but it is the Holy Spirit that is confessing. I want to believe that everyone in our silo missions has received the Holy Spirit. And we know that the Holy Spirit is in us, but if it controls us, then that means that we are full of the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, but it, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. These are people who cannot acknowledge that Jesus Christ is our Lord. He needs to pray and ask for faith. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Christ. We must receive this Holy Spirit and let it enter us. Then we can say that we are the true Christians. Acts chapter 10 verse 44. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who were listening to the message. When you hear the word, then the Holy Spirit enters each person. God's word is God himself. God's word is spirit and life. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are Spirit and are life. So, the minute that we receive the word, we are receiving Spirit and life. When we are listening to Father's word, then we must know that Father's Spirit is entering into us and making us full. When we hear the word, the eternal life is entering us. And that is why we can win over the word. So the more trials that we have, the more we must listen to the word. Because the moment the word enters, the moment the spirit of God enters, then the darkness is being cast away. Acts chapter 8, verse 15. Who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist was born full of the Holy Spirit, but later he forgot and lost it. Then he doubted Christ. So we must be full of the Holy Spirit until the end and be the spiritual two witnesses. And we must be able to stand before Jesus Christ and be able to witness him. I pray that we can all do this. Let's pray. Father God, we have heard the word about the missions of John the Baptist 
Please let us never forget the words you give and make them bear beautiful, precious, fragrant, and valuable fruits in all aspects of our, our life until we uphold your will. We desire to receive your words. As the psalm says, apart from you, I have no good thing. May that be our confession of faith and bless us to the end. Please strongly protect our families and churches of our silo missions with the word of fire of the Holy Spirit and hold us with the word of power. Grant us also the blessing of understanding your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.